distractions. I can't live like this anymore. You've got to let go of Max for good. Max isn't the one I have to let go of. I can see that now. What do you mean? I've had enough, Steve. I want a divorce. Do you hear me? I want a divorce. What, what are you talking about? It's quite simple. I can't live with you anymore. I want out. No, what you want is my brother. Max has nothing to do with Damn it, Gabrielle, at least you could be honest with me. You don't want to hear the truth. You won't even face the fact that you married your ranch, not me. Oh, we're not partners, not in any sense of the word. You don't want a wife, you want a ranch hand to help you dig the wells, mend the fences, feed the livestock. You married a rancher, that's who I am. I thought I married a man who cared, who was sensitive, but no. I can see now that I was completely wrong about that. I told you that you could have your damn business. That's just the point. Why do I need your permission? Well, you don't, evidently. You borrowed money from Max, you, you signed a deal with Rafe, and you didn't discuss it with me at all. That's because it's impossible to discuss anything with you. You just send out the orders, make the demands, and that's the end of that. Well, you can just take your orders, and your demands, and your obsession with your ranch, and your jealousy, and get out of my life. Excuse me. May I help you? I hope so. My name is Sarah Gordon, and I was... Oh, yes. Hi, hello. Hi. Uh, the owner told me you were interested in the building next door for some sort of school. Yeah, um, actually, it's a school for the blind. Mm -hmm. I was supposed to meet Tina Roberts or Carl Dryden here. I was wondering if they called or left a message oh. for me. Or... No, there's no messages. Oh, Sarah. Sarah, hi. I'm so sorry. I'm late. You know what happened? The photographers kept saying just one more picture, and this crowd just kept... Whoa, what, what, what crowd and what pictures? Oh, oh, I'll, I'll tell you all about it later, okay? But let's go look at the building. Where's the real estate guy? Oh, I have the keys right here. You're welcome to go look yourself, but I'm sure it'll be here shortly. Okay, well, thanks. Um, when he arrives, would you tell him that we're next door? Yes, yes, of course. Um, oh, what? Is there some kind of a problem? No, 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 no. The reason I hesitated, it's just that... Well, it's only fair to warn you. Uh, there's someone interested in buying the inn and also the adjacent property, so you may have to do your negotiating all over again. You know that he's going to want to expand the inn. Well, Sarah, that's okay. Look, we'll just explain to him how important the, the, the school is going to be for everybody in Vontaux. It's going to change their lives, and I know he'll go along with us, all right? Now, thanks for the warning. Sure, uh, but if you want to talk to him now, he just walked in. Max. anywhere, buddy. So you've just given up? Oh, come on, bud. Sheriff took about five or six men. They're still looking. All of us from farming businesses came back. Tend to things. Did Jenny go back to town? No, our buggy's still waiting out on the front. But you know... Yeah, your sister must not be around here either if you're eating biscuits right before supper. There's something mighty peculiar going on here. Come here. Look at the rafters in the living room. Oh, they threw a roof or something. Oh, Cody! Honey, honey, what is going on? I tried to stop him, but Blaze told me to go ahead and go, and I was just so scared I didn't know what to do. Honey, what is this all about? Blaze, what about Blaze? Oh, they took She and Jenny Deal and Laredo have kidnapped Jenny and Blaze. Vicky? Hey, Fadon, shouldn't we knock or at least let Hera let us in? No, no, we don't stand on ceremony around here. We are family. Hey, Asa, Renee, I thought I heard oh. you too. Hi, honey. Where, where's Vicky, Cord? Uh, I took my bride to be for a ride in the country, and we brought back some spring fresh vegetables Whoa. for the house. Well, that's going to be great. I know Vicky's really going to appreciate that. I was talking to her the other day. She was talking about how much she missed Gilbert's vegetables around the house. Well, is she working at the banner? Uh, no, actually, she and Bo went up to the mountain cabin for a little bit. Bo wanted to check out that land that Clint had left him. Oh, really? How long are they going to be gone? Be gone? Oh, at least a day. But the boys are at schools, and the little uh, your granddaughter is upstairs along with your great-grandson, if you'd like to say hello. Oh, I love that. Somebody planning a trip? Hmm? Suitcase. Oh, uh, that's fine, actually, because uh, I'm going to be moving back in here at Landfair. Oh, Vicki asked you to uh, stay here with her? 
Well, obviously, I, I checked the whole thing up with Vicky before I made any move, but uh, I, I did want to thank you for putting up with me as long as you did. Well, Court, I'll tell you, I'm in favor of you uh, staying here, supporting Vicky, and to be here for her. But the arrangement could be a, prove to be a double-edged sword, and one of the edges could be razor sharp. Asa, don't even start on me, all right? Hey. War side is simple. Repentance is hard. Remember that. What on earth are you two talking about? He is trying to warn me about Tina, and he's wrong. Dead wrong. Honey, after Max left her at the altar, Tina is on the prowl again. He's going to be the number one target. If you're not careful, she's going to sink her claws into you before you know it. Look, I guess I got some sorry news for you then, because the main reason I am moving back here is because of Tina. She and I have decided to try to work things out between us. So you're really thinking about buying this hotel? If the owner is willing to make a couple of concessions. Well, owning two ho and running two hotels, that's a big responsibility. I've never been afraid of work or responsibility. No, you've proven that over and over again. Oh, yeah. Well, you well know I'm only really interested in two things. Love and money. Thought I'd try my hand at money. I'm bound to be luckier. If you'll excuse me, I think I'm going to wait for Mr. Dryden outside. Max. How's Vicky? She's trying to get over Clint's death. I don't know if she'll ever accept it. Sorry. But I think this school for the blind would really help. I mean, since it's going to be dedicated in Clint's memory. So if you buy the buildings next to the inn, if you might consider leasing one of them to Sarah, that is, if it's suitable for a school. Well, I'm willing to talk to her, see if we can work something out. Thank you. I really appreciate it. And I know Vicki will, too. Well, we both got work to do. But Max! Look, is this how it's going to be between us all the time? Look, we've been through so much together. We shared a lot of love. I told you my exact feelings the night you showed up in my hotel suite. Yeah, I know. And I'm still embarrassed. How I threw myself at you and tried to seduce you into marrying me. And I, I understand why you were angry with me. I certainly do. It's just... Look, if you just listen to me. Look, I know we can, we can try to put some of this anger behind us, Max, please. Don't you think we owe that to one another? Oh, honey, come on. You sit down right here. Let's need some water for your sister. I just wish I could have been braver like Jenny. What about Jenny? <laughs> honey, here, you drink the water first, and you settle down, and then you tell us exactly what happened. All right, what? that's good, bud. Why'd you even let Dean Laredo in here? I didn't let them in here, buddy. They burst through the doors, and they were wearing their guns on their hips, and they tied blades in my hands behind her back. What about Jenny? Did they tie Jenny, too? No, she wasn't here then, but when she got here, she took Papa's rifle, and she threatened him with it, and she even blew a big hole up in the ceiling there. And then she told him to untie us, and they did, and Blaze told me to run for it. So while Jenny was holding the gun on him, I snuck out of here and headed over to Slim's to get some help from him. But I don't know what happened. But the next thing, they're coming out of the front door, and Blaze and Jenny are all tied up. I was so scared. Yeah, I know, honey. Just settle down here for a second. Hold on. Did they tie you? I don't know. I was in the barn for hours. But I don't know how Blaise, long. May, I've been here for about 15 minutes. Did you hear me right up? I did. Why didn't you call to me then? I just thought it was Dale and Laredo, that's all. And I thought, well, and the other two horses rode up. I thought I better go ahead and get over to Slim's, you know. And then I saw it was you. I should have helped. Oh, honey, come on. There's nothing you could have done. There's no way you could have helped those ladies out all by your lonesome. <laughs> Why'd they want to kidnap Miss Jenny and Miss Blaze in the first place? Revenge, most likely. All right, honey, listen to me. Now, you've got to concentrate. Is there anything you could give us that would help us find out where they took these ladies? No. They put a shawl on me, and then they put a shawl on Blaze, and they told us that, that they didn't want us freezing to death on them. Okay, that's good. That would be when we went up in the mountains and clean. Well, the desert gets awful cold at night, too, Cody. Better check them both out. I'll go with Clint. Cody, you head for the mountains. I need me a gun. No, uh, I, got, no, I, I got something more important for you to do. You ride over to Slim's, ask uh, his oldest boy to come over here and stay with your sister. Then ride in and tell Buck and the boys what's happened and tell your dad while you're at it. Yeah, but they're no good. I mean, they're in a lick of good, neither one of I mean, them. Come on, settle down. Don't worry. And we're going to find these ladies. We're going to bring them back home safe and sound. Blaze, I mean, Jenny and Blaze must just be scared to death. Well, now, Blaze is a pretty strong lady. 
And Jenny's a lot stronger than most people imagine she is. She took care of the Dawson boys all by herself, didn't she? <laughs> I reckon those two gals get along just fine as long as they're together. <laughs> You were only pretending about not being scared. You are really scared for Miss Jenny, aren't you? Yes, I am. Not just because your future depends on it? No, that's not the only reason. I happen to care a, a great deal about the lady. Me too. Well, look, I'm going to find Jenny and bring her back safe and sound. That goes for plays, too. You get on your pony and go do what I told you to do. Yes, sir. So when you tried to stop Lamar from hurting your mother, he knocked you out. You regained consciousness, and you heard him threaten to kill both you and your mother if she didn't keep silent. Yes. But you don't know what she was supposed to remain silent about. Maybe about his trying to rape her. Look, I don't... Dad, we have to keep going over and over and over this. Look, Mary Lynn... But I know how hard this is for you, to talk about it, to remember it. But I can't help you unless I know the whole story here. I mean, sometimes in a case like this, just talking about it will help trigger a memory that you've buried or that you consider unimportant. I understand. And you've been very patient with me. I'm glad you decided to come out of retirement. Well, I'll, I'll do my best for you. That's a promise. I hope it's good enough. Look, John, no one even knew you were a lawyer. Yeah, Wade, well, I wanted it that way for personal reasons. Now, look, I'm convinced that Mary Lynn is innocent. And I'm going to find a way to prove it. That's all that's important. I can't believe that you're willing to put your, your whole future into his hands. He hasn't tried a case in a long time. The trial is a month away, and there's no way he can put a case together in that amount of time. Wade, no lawyer can without help. I plan on getting all the help I need. I've been on the phone half the night last night with a couple of law professors at the university. They're going to make themselves available for consultations. And I'm closing Russell and Callison investigations. And I'm taking on an extremely capable assistant who should be in Herb's office right about now, explaining to him that he's going to have one hell of a fight on his hands, and we intend to win. I hope you've called me here to tell me that Mary Lynn has agreed to uh, plead guilty to a lesser charge. I called you here because of a, a message I just received from Judge Weber's law clerk informing me that Mary Lynn Dennison's trial date has been moved up to next week. Yes, I understand the judge was invited to participate in a seminar in London. You pulled strings to get that date changed, and I resent the hell out of your interference. Not only are you sabotaging Mary Lynn, who just hired a lawyer yesterday, but you're sabotaging my case as well. I am the district attorney, and I decide when we go to trial. Look, I am the one who was accused of rape and murder here. I want to get this thing resolved as quickly as possible. And I want this case tried in the courts and not in the media. You're trying the case in the media, Donald. You're the one who's giving out the interviews and getting all the headlines, and I want it stopped. And if you have any more ideas that affect this case, I want you to discuss them with me first. I am in charge here, not you. Mr. Callison, sorry to interrupt, but a messenger just delivered this for Mr. Lamar. He said it's urgent. What is it? Nobody knows that I'm here. Well, there's no name or return address. Mr. Bradley's here. Should I ask him to come back later? Uh, no, I'll see him now. Excuse me, this will only take a minute. I've got to go now. You all right? I'll call you later, Herb. What's the matter with him? I don't know. Well, good. Give me a little more time to work on the Dennison case. John Russell's partner just arrived to discuss that with you. His partner? Yes, sir. If you prefer that I arrange an appointment... No, that's okay. Send him in. Send him in? That's an awfully sexist assumption. Why don't you believe a woman can be just as effective as a man? 
I, I knew it was a mistake to let you come back to Landview, oh, honey. When we go home. Oh, there's that word again. Let me come back to Landview. As if you have the right to tell me where to go, when to go, and what to do. Gabrielle, you're twisting all my words and making me look like the bad guy because, because you're upset and because you're angry. Now let's just calm down and look at this thing rationally. Oh, I am more rational now than I have been in months. No, no, you're not. You're saying things that that you don't mean. That you're going to regret tomorrow or oh, the next no. day. No, I am completely resolved to the fact that. I have finally got the courage to be totally honest with you. My only regret is I didn't do this before now. Honey, why can't, why can't we just go home? It's not my home, it's yours. I hate the place. We keep throwing our money away on a piece of land that'll be nothing more than desert. When we put the irrigation system in, it's going to be a land of fertile green pastures. You get out of this dream world of yours. It's the same one that sent your parents to their death long before their time. That is not true. This ranch in Arizona is different. We can make it work. It's our dream, Gabrielle. Yours and mine. That's not my dream. You dragged me there. You never asked me if I wanted to go. It was my wedding gift to you. Well, I don't want it. I don't want any part of it. I'm not giving up my life for some head of cattle and worthless piece Stop of... Stop it! Please. Stop it! You're destroring our Let dream! Let go our... of me! Gabrielle! You're hurting me! Gabrielle. God, I'm, I'm sorry. No, wait, Gabrielle, don't go! Something exciting just hit carpets. Cord, the reason we study history is so we don't make the same mistakes over again. I think Tina and I have learned enough about our own history to keep from repeating it. Oh, damn it, Cord. You've got Buchanan blood, Buchanan brains. Reading a wily woman is as easy for you as falling off a log. Let me tell you something, Asa. Tina loves me, and she always has. After Max dumped her, she decided you're her best choice, especially after inheriting some money from Clint. You're right about one thing. I do have Buchanan blood in my veins, but I intend to lead my own life and choose the woman I want to share my life with me. Now, if you don't like that, you better just keep your nose out of it. Oh, Lordy, Asa, darling, what have you done? I told the truth. If he doesn't want to listen, that is his problem. You are not a mean-spirited man. What made you say those terrible things? Renee, you don't know Tina. I had that little hussy's number the first time I laid eyes on her. What? She's caused more trouble for this family than you'll ever know. Nobody's perfect, honey. She's not even close. No, what I'm trying to say is everybody makes mistakes. But it is possible to change. I mean, for instance, I certainly don't hope that, hope that I'm not the same woman I was 20 years ago or, or even a year ago today. You couldn't compare yourself to, to Tina. You could never be like that. Bo might not agree with you. Bo is against all marriages. Why? Because Dee Dee walked out on him. <sighs> Bo did not attack the institution of marriage. He attacked me personally. And that's exactly what you're doing to Tina. Now, if you want the family to give me the benefit of the doubt, I think that you owe Tina the same courtesy. All right, maybe I was roughing her. I'm sorry. Cord's the one you should apologize to. You're right. I'll give him a little time to cool off and we'll talk about it later. You better remind me about that. Oh, I don't think that's necessary, is it? Well, it's just liable to go out of my head like everything else these days. Oh, honey. You're still grieving over it, Clint. It's not unusual at a time like that to have a little difficulty concentrating. I had better pull myself together damn soon. Because I am beginning to act like an old fool. Oh, sweetheart. <laughs> Max, do you remember that time when we were in that abandoned building, you know, after you broke me out of prison? And we made all those big plans about going to Australia. And then we, we made love for the first time. Tony and Cleo. Yeah, Tony. Whoever, I always hated that name. But I did love you, Max. Tina. And I would have made you a good wife. Now, I would have. It's important to me that you understand that. Max, I would have done anything to make you happy. We would have had children. I would have shared your, your whole life with you. But then... When you left me at the altar like you did, and then when you threw me out of your suite, I couldn't believe you could be so cruel to me that you would try to break my heart like that. I was protecting my own heart. I know that. I... I realized that, and you did the right thing.
because you realized before I did even that I... that I still wanted court and that eventually I was going to have to face that. Listen, I really don't want to hear this. No, you have to hear it. It's important to me that you understand, Max, please. I do love you. I never wanted to hurt you. I honestly thought I could make you happy. And now you know it was impossible. It's because of you that Cord and I are now able to try to work things out. I mean, he's even moving back into Landfair. Didn't waste any time, did you? Max, you forced us into doing this. I thought you'd be happy for us. What is this? A little invitation to be your best friend and Cord's and uh, maybe play a good old Uncle Max to little Clint? But forget it. Look, maybe it won't happen real soon. Maybe it won't even happen. I'll tell you way, when it's going to happen. Never. I'm going to go join Sarah. Real good, Max. Real good. Just her and Tina, that really helped everything. Oh, Max, I'm so glad you're here. Something terrible has happened. Look, why don't you take care of the private investigations and let John handle Mary Lynn's defense, huh? What are you afraid of? That I'll turn into a top-notch legal assistant and we'll bury you in court? <sighs> Honey, th this is a very emotional case. You're one of Mary Lynn Dennison's best friends. Naturally, you're concerned about her, and you're angry with me for prosecuting her. Dad, if you are worried about any strain, my involvement on this case, my place on our relationship, don't be. Well, how can I not be worried? You hardly talk to me now. What happens after a couple of days of battling in the courtroom? Well, I've given this a lot of thought, and I think the best solution is for us to approach this from a strictly business point of view. I want you to view me as John's assistant. Not as your daughter. Swell. That's kind of tough when you come barging in here without an appointment, acting just like my daughter. All right. From now on, I give you my word that I will always call first. Yes. And I want your word that you will keep me and John up to date on all the facts of the case. Well. I just hope you won't take it too personally when John wins Mary Lynn's acquittal. <laughs> no, absolutely not. Great. So, we're agreed on all the ground rules? You look like your mother in that outfit. Very attractive. Dad. Sorry. Honey, you really think we can pull this off? We can if you come clean with all the facts about this case. John knows as much as I do. I don't think so. Then you might be able to manipulate all the other lawyers who oppose you. But since you're my father, I have a distinct advantage in knowing when you're keeping a secret. Now, there is definitely something about this case that you're not revealing. Something going on behind the scenes. Now, what is it, Honey, Dad? John has access to every piece of evidence I have. Might as well move in here and share this office. Oh, well, then me. you and Donald Lamar will have to carry on your private conversation somewhere else. All right, now, Donald Lamar is not in charge of this case. I am. Well, you're taking orders from him. You see, you're losing your objectivity. Yeah, right. Well, I guess it's a little disappointing when you find out your father would rather make a creep like Donald Lamar happy than do what's right for Mary Lynn. Trust me. I will do whatever is necessary to make sure that Mary Lynn is taken care of. Sure. As long as it works out for Donald Lamar. Do you feel better about John defending me? Yeah, a little bit. It seems like he knows what he's doing so far. I'm just glad that you've got a little more confidence in him. Yeah, well, you've given me that, too. Knowing that you'll be beside me and... and that you'll always love me. Just like... Just like my... Well... You know... After I, uh, after I got over the, the shot that she was really my mom, and after we forgave each other, it was like my whole life changed. Knowing that she would always love me. She would always be beside me no matter what. And you know what? She was. Yeah, she was. Oh, I have 
gut stuff falling to pieces every time I think about her. I, I want you to be prepared for the fact that there are going to be a lot of lies told about your mother in that courtroom. Lamar's going to make sure of that. Yeah, well, I hope somebody believes that she was having an affair with him. Hey, no one will. You know, he is going to do everything he can to make sure everyone knows about her past. You know what? Just like John said, everyone already knows about her past, thanks to Billy. And your mother handled that situation graciously and with honesty. She won over a lot of people. Well, what about the champagne and caviar that Donald had sent to her room? It was, it was just some guy putting the make on her. She refused him. Oh, I wish there was some way we could prove that. Listen, unless Donald Lamar confesses, there really isn't any way to prove it. It's going to be between him and your mother what her true feelings were for him. Hey, what's that? Oh, these are my files on Donald Lamar and his ex-chauffeur, Griffin Clark. I'm doing a background check on him. We don't have anything yet, but I've got a PI friend working on it. Well, Mr. Dennison was doing a check on Lamar. He might have some information for you if you want to check with him. Um, I have to go. Uh, look, you stay here and you talk strategy with John, and I'll, I'll meet you back here later, okay? No, I'll go with you. No, no, this is something that I have to do by myself. Three little monkeys, three little monkeys jumping on a bed. One bed. Oh. Hi, Sarah. How you doing? Okay. Hey, uh, how, how'd the uh, real estate hunting go? Not bad, actually. You know, Tina wasn't kidding when she said she could negotiate the best deal in town. I mean, she had this guy's head spinning. Ah, uh, yeah, I'm sure she did. Uh, your mama's got a way of doing that to people, you know that? <laughs> yeah, she's certainly one of the most determined people I've ever met in my life. Oh, you bet. Listen, Sarah, there's something I uh, kind of need to talk to you about. It concerns me and Tina. Let me guess. You're moving into Landfair. Tina let it uh, slip when we were out looking at properties. Oh, I see. Uh, did you just happen to let anything else slip? Court, I'm not surprised. I mean, you're a beautiful family. I'm sure you have a really happy future ahead of you. <sighs> you know... I hope my moving in here does. Well, I, I don't even know how to ask this exactly. Boy, you didn't make me any promises. And I really had no right to expect anything from you except for friendship. Oh. Well, I, I just hope that my moving in here won't make you feel uh, uncomfortable in any way. Because you are part of the family now in a big way. Right? It's okay. Listen, I am so happy to be your friend and to be a part of this family. I think what's important for me now is to uh, concentrate on establishing that school. And since I've uh, leased the property next to the Waterside Inn, I'm going to move into the hotel. Oh, Sarah, why? Well, I'm going to be there all the time anyway, and it, it just makes more sense than driving back and forth. Okay, it's going to be more convenient. I I'll give you that. Are you sure it's your decision and not Tina's? Yes, it was my decision. As a matter of fact, Tina spent about a half an hour trying to convince me to stay here at Landfair. She did. Yes, she did. Will you trust me on this? I, uh, I think it's really better this way. I gotta go pack my things. I can't believe Steve did this. Has he lost his temper like this before? No, he's never been this violent, but I've always felt it under the surface. It was only a matter of time before he lost control. Gab Gabrielle, Gabrielle, look, I know, I know my brother. He, he's not that kind of a man. I, he's never hurt you before. Well, he's hurt me now, and he'll do it again if he gets a chance. Look, you're a very delicate woman, and he's really strong. Now, maybe he just grabbed you and didn't realize his own strength. What if he grabs Al in the fit of anger? I'll take care of him. Don't worry, he won't hurt Al. What, what started all this? Oh, the usual thing, telling me how we're going to live our life, only this time. He wants to adopt Al. What? He's seen a lawyer, he's had the papers drawn up. 
He thinks it'll bring us closer together. Did he talk to you about this before? No, because he knows I never would have agreed to it. But obviously now he wants to coerce me into it by using force, obviously. He's gone way too far. I gotta talk with my brother. No, Max, please don't. Look, if he knows I came running over to you here, then he's just gonna think I twisted everything around. It's time I put a stop to this. Look, you, uh... Wait, right here. I'll, I'll be right back. Uh, excuse me, uh... You got some place where Mrs. Holden can rest up and then I'll, I'll rent a room if I have to. Uh, she can use 203. Yeah. Uh, there's no charge, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Gabrielle, you go upstairs, you lay down, you try to relax, okay? I don't want you going over there. You won't be able to talk to him. You'll get into a fight. There's no problem. I'll control my temper. It's not your temper that worries me. You just relax. I'll deal with Steve. Side in front desk. May I help you? Uh, Mr. Clark is that? Oh, hold on, sir. Mr. Clark. It's phone for you. Uh, transfer to your room, sir. No, I'll take it on the house phone, thanks. Good, within just a moment. Hold on, please. Hello, operator. Griffin Clark here. You have a call. Hello, Clark here. I have been calling all over town for you. Donald, what a pleasant surprise. Especially after you made it so clear to me that you never wanted to see me or hear from me again. Will you just shut up and listen? I just received a copy of the front page of the National Intruder. How very nice of them to send it to you for your little scrapbook. Look, there's a picture on the end there. Across my face is stamped the word deceased. Griffin, this is a death threat. I want you to find out who sent this and why. Well, it appears as though your amorous little adventures have caught the attentions of the big boys in New York. My guess is that you're wor they're worried that you're going to spill the beans during the trial over Lee's death. I don't need guesses. I need answers now. Listen, I'm not your friend. And secondly, I'm not going to do you any more favors. You're, you're, you're on your own on this one, boy. Let me remind you, my friend. You're up to your neck in this one. You killed Alex Crown. You're the one who killed that patient at Mountain View named Peck. Remember that? So if I am in an unsafe position, Griffin, you are really exposed, so if you value that miserable accumulation of, of experiences that you call your life, you will get this information from me immediately. Oh, I'm so sorry I couldn't stop him. It's your fault, Major. Just tell me everything you know to help me find my wife. I kept talking about how cold it was going to be. The mountains of sun was passed. Let's go. You ride with my posse. Whoa, 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 wait a minute, Buck. I think our best shot here is if we just split up. I've been going after desperados before you were born. You do not give me orders. I ain't giving you orders. All I'm saying is our best shot is if we sneak up on Dean Laredo and I go charge it in there. We storm the camp, we blow them king of cop, then we get our women folk back. Buck, I'm telling you, the women could wind up dead. They could shoot them before we ever get there. All right, just hold it. We're not going to get Ginny and Blaze back by fighting amongst ourselves. If you want your wife back, we'd better get moving. Move out. Be safe. Take care, buddy. Take care of your sister. Let me guess. My lovely wife went running to you. My goodness, what a surprise. Those bruises on Gabrielle's arms were the surprise. So, Steve, what the hell's the matter with you? When did you start beating up women? I, I didn't beat her up. I, I just shook her. I didn't mean to hurt her. I, she, she won't let up. You have got to let up. Listen, you better do it soon or you're going to be in serious trouble. Why, Max, why, why don't you just stay out of it? Listen. You open your eyes, quit blaming me, quit blaming Gabrielle, and quit even blaming little Al. This is your problem. You've got this obsession with turning this little plot of dirt into paradise, and it's going to destroy your marriage. A of dirt could be a paradise if Gabrielle would just support me a little, give me a little patience. Don't you hear yourself? You say the exact same thing you said about, about the homestead in Texas. You turned two loving brothers into Cain and Abel. 
just because you're too stubborn to let go. I, I can't let it go, Max. It's all I have. Ranching is in my blood. I don't know how to do anything else. I guess that little corner of the desert and your pride are worth a lot more than the woman you claim to love. Okay, fine. You got your priorities screwed up. That's your problem. But you hear this. My son is the most important thing in the world to me. And I will never, I repeat, never sign over custody of him in an adoption. Mr. Holden come back yet? No, ma'am. Sorry, she'll be back shortly. Gabrielle! Oh, going. That's okay. Vernon, I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to say something to you at the service. I'm so sorry. My condolences about your mother. Thank you. There's nothing I can say, but you do know that my prayers are with you. Prayers will help for sure, but uh, God only helps those who help themselves, so that's exactly what I intend to do. I hope everything works out. Thank you. Uh, Griffin Clark, please. Hello, Griffin. Um, it's Marilyn Dennison. I'm, I'm down in the lobby, and I'd, I'd like to speak to you. I promise it'll only take a few minutes. Thank you. I'll be here. We're home, honey. We miss Grandpa's birthday cake. I know, honey, it's this fever. But the whole ride home, the children's Tylenol was hard at work. And that's the same medicine your doctor gives his own little boy. It is? Mm-hmm. And that's why Dad and I wouldn't trust anything else to you. Bring fever down fast with children's Tylenol. It's the... Nelson. Oh, there's my two favorite guys. Hey. <laughs> what are you doing? Uh, actually, we're just waiting for Mommy to come home. Here you oh, go. Oh, well, here I am. You know, actually, I got tied up running errands after I left Sarah, and then Cook stopped me, wanted to know about dinner, and then Heron uh. stopped me asking me about you bringing in all your clothes. And I am so happy that you didn't waste any time on that. Yeah, well, I guess you didn't waste any time telling Sarah about what our plans were, huh? Why? Is it a secret? No, no, it's not. Hey, baby, it should be after the way Asa reacted when I told him. What did he say to you? Oh, never mind, Tina. I probably shouldn't have mentioned it anyway. Well, I have a right to know if he was ripping me apart, which I'm sure he was. Look, the man hates me. He will take every opportunity he has to trash me, which I am exactly sure is what he was doing. I can just hear him now. Oh, you're crazy to trust her. She's manipulative and cunning and just all kinds of trouble. That just about covers it, yeah. I knew it. I did. Come here, honey. And then, Sarah probably told you that she was moving to the water side. Yeah, she did. That's all you needed, right? So you just took your cue from Asa and assumed that I manipulated Sarah into moving out of landfare because I felt threatened by now, her Now, wait wife. a minute. Sarah told me that it was all her idea. It was. I mean, she came up with this idea before she even knew about you and I getting back together. I mean, really, she did. I mean, I like Sarah. I want us hey, all to be hey, friends, and she can stay Tina, here as long as... I believe you, all right? Although I must admit that there were a few seconds there when I thought something else. Hey. Mm, so what I say? Okay. How many seconds? Ten. Uh, all right, maybe 20 tops, but that was all. Well, what do you say? Okay, I forgive you. I don't forgive Asa, but I forgive you. Yeah. Thank you. So I uh, heard you talk to Max, too. Yeah. Oh, Court, it was awful. I've said all the wrong things. Oh, I... I mean, I was really hoping we could patch things up between us. So what happened? Well, he... I don't know. He's just so hurt, you know? And, and so he said some things to hurt me. Well... I guess he thought it would make him feel better, but I think it just made him feel worse. You know, girl, it isn't exactly easy to stop loving you. I just hope you find someone who can love him as much as I love you. Yeah, me too. Me too. Uh, Gabriel, 
Come on in. I thought I'd find you both at each other's throats. Well, we were both headed that way, but we worked it out. Thanks for being honest with me, Max, all right? I'll think about what you said. Hey, let me know, okay? <laughs> You're not leaving now, are you? You and Stevie got a little private talking to do. I think you've done enough talking. No, Gabrielle, wait. Don't touch me. Gabrielle, I, I never should have been so rough with you. I, I would never, I'd die before I'd hurt you. I hope you know that. Well, you haven't proven that to me lately. I know, I know, and I'm sorry about that, but I, I've made a decision. I didn't even tell Max, but I think it'll save our marriage. Our marriage is over. It, it, it's not over. All we have to do is make a commitment to work at it. Save your energies for the ranch. I'm selling the ranch. Max made me see what a fool I've been to put a few acres of desert land above the woman that I love. That ranch has been our problem all along. And once I sell it, all our problems will disappear. Okay, make it quick. What do you want? You know about my problem, of course. Look, I've got problems of my own, dear. Look, if the jury believes Donald's version of my mother's death, I'm going to prison for the rest of my life. I know he's lying. I know she wasn't his lover. I need you to help me. Good luck. You were, you were Donald's chauffeur for years. You two were very close. You told me that the night at the carriage house. So? You also told me you know the whole truth about Donald and my mother. I need to know it now. Will you help me, please? Why should I help you? I don't owe you anything. Look, suppose I make it worth your while. You mean that? Yes, I do. Well, in that case, I suppose I can spare you a few minutes of my time. Why don't you come upstairs to my room? I'm sure I can work out something that'll make us both happy. 